Hi everyone, thanks for joining um, my very first watercolor painting tutorial video. Um, so I thought it would be fun to start off with um, a painting that I do fairly regularly, a painting style I should say, which is my misty mountain scene uh, with some pine trees and the mountains and a few birds. It's a pretty simple painting. Um, we're going to do one just like this, which is monochrome, so it's just one color. Um, or technically it's two colors we're going to blend together to create this scene. So let's jump right in and talk about materials. Now I will list everything in the description that I talk about um, so you can look at that if you want specifics. But I also just wanted to mention that if you don't have access to the same materials that I have today, that's no problem. You can still do this with any watercolor paints, brushes, and paper. Um, it doesn't have to be specific to this. If you are going to spend your money on something that's a bit better quality, I would suggest um, your paper. If you can get something that's a bit of a heavier duty or 100% cotton paper. The one that we're using today, which I have already taped down, is Arches Cold Press. It's 140 pounds, it's 100% cotton, and this is sized out to a 5 by 7 Now I have used just some green painter's tape from the hardware store, and I have just taped down my paper to um, my board here. And this will create a nice border around the paper, and it helps, um, it helps with the integrity of the paper itself. When it gets really wet, it begins to warp and bend, and this kind of helps re reduce that a little bit. Not entirely, but a bit. So that's your paper. Um, the paints that I'm gonna use today are a Daniel Smith Payne's Blue Gray and a Prussian Blue. We're gonna mix these together to get that nice sort of soft bluey gray that we can use to create these mountains in the sky. Everything in here, including the birds, is a combination of this. The only other color we're using is a black. The black I'm using is an ivory black, just from Van Gogh. Um, this is a student grade watercolor. If you have access to this though, it's, it's one of the better student grade ones, I think. Okay. You're also gonna need water, of course. Um, I use two jars of water. One is clean and one is dirty to help keep my brushes reasonably uh, rinsed off as I go. I also have a sponge, some paper towel, and let's talk about brushes. So in this video I'm probably just going to use three. A size 12 round, a size 8 round, and these are um, a squirrel fiber squirrel hair brush and then this one is another size 8 round and it's synthetic so it's got a bit of a, um, a a sharp point on it but it doesn't hold as much water so it's a little bit better for a detail um, detail work such as the birds or the pine trees we're going to create. Um, you may also want a pencil and an eraser to draw in some of the mountain lines. Um, and I also have a ceramic palette here that you can use. You could use a white plate to kind of mix up your paints. This one is nice just because you've got wells and we're going to create three different values of paint to work from. So in my um, palette here I have a bunch of half pan watercolors that are the tubes I've just pressed into these pans and I'm going to work from there. So let's jump right in. Um, one other thing I recommend having is either a heat gun or a blow dryer. That will help you speed up the drying of the layers as you're working. Because um, we do have to build up layers and let them dry and continue. So it is a bit tedious. So you may want to have access to, I just use a blow dryer, um, to dry your layers as you go. And I also like to grab some test strips, just scrap pieces of watercolor paper to test out my colors on and my color values in this case. So let's jump right in. So I'm just going to pick up some paint 
and start adding it to my palette so we can create the colors we want, color we want. So again, this is just a Payne's Blue Gray. It's one of my very favorite colors. Okay, and we're gonna pick up some Prussian Blue. It's another great color. And from there, we're just gonna mix them together until we kinda get the color we wanna go with. Okay, so let's call that, let's say that's our darkest color. What you can do now is take a bit of that, put it in a new well. You can add a little bit of water. That can be your, your mid-range color. And then if you do the same thing to your next one and add a little bit more water, I'm just using my brush for that then you can start to see um, that you're getting three different values of the same color essentially. Now that's very hard to see in the palette, I realize that, which is part of the reason that I like test strips. So I'm grabbing some of the lightest color that we've got. And if you think that that's too dark, like maybe that is, just add more water. Maybe I want to go a little bit lighter still. Yeah, it's probably a bit better. Rinse your brush. Pick up maybe your mid-range color. And your darkest value, your darkest color. If you're not happy with that, just try again. Just keep adding water and, and paint until you kind of get the colors that you like and the values that seem best to you. Okay. I'll just keep that right there. So what we're gonna start with is just using this one that I already created as a guide. We're just going to grab a mechanical pencil or just an HB pencil, whatever, and just kind of put in a few guidelines, a few mountain lines and ridges um, to kind of help us figure out where we're going with this. And um, when I created this one, I changed it a lot. And when I do my mountains, you'll see I don't always stick to what is here but it's just to kind of give you an idea so let's just put in some rough mountains here it's right easy as that. That's all you really have to do. Just your brush is going to do the hard work of creating these ridges and everything. So these pencil marks are just, like I said, a really rough guideline. And then this helps you when you're creating the composition of a mountain scene. Um, you can change up and do it however you like. I could do this completely different. I'm just choosing to go with this to make it a little bit simpler on me while, the, while I'm filming this. Okay, so the next step I've kind of done is to, with clean water, um, cover your whole top surface here, maybe the top sort of three quarters of your page with um, just clean water. Now we're going to paint wet on wet to get the sky to kind of get a gradient, starting from the darkest all the way down. Um, and this is a pretty simple thing to do with your biggest brush, size 12. Pick up 
um, some of that color, starting with, you can start with the darkest here, and just sort of just run your brush back and forth across the page, across the paper. A little more color. And go as dark as you want, but keep the darkest part at the top. Then I rinse off my brush, pick up some of the lightest, and I just start to pull some of that color down. You don't want it to be overly dark, or maybe you do, but I just like a light gradient for this, a light um, sort of blended sky. So you can just go back and forth. When you go back and forth like this, I think it just helps make it smooth. And because it's already wet on wet, you're not getting any hard lines down here. This is already damp, so it's just blending together. And with working with watercolors, especially this, you, you do want to work reasonably fast. Just because you don't want a big, big part of this is that you don't want any of the bottom parts of whatever we're working on to dry before we've had a chance to blend them out. I'm just going to add a little, little bit more. And just again with my wet brush, just kind of blending that out. Back and forth until I'm happy with it. And I think we're going to call that good. Now I am going to dry this layer and then we'll move on to the first layer of the mountains. Okay, so we've got our sky nice and dry. Um, I'm going to move on and start creating the next layer on my mountains. So I'm going to pick up some of this. Um, I'm going to try mixing something sort of mid-range. And we're going to create our mountains. So I just want to do about maybe half of the mountain on here. And the really important thing when you're working like this is that this bottom edge needs to stay wet so that you can pick up some clean water or lighter water or whatever you're working with. And you can begin to blend that edge out, blending it down softening it into more of a lighter color. Picking up more clean water and blending it all the way down. And it's as simple as that. Now, the important thing here with doing these layers is to let each layer dry completely so you can speed up the process with your um, hair dryer or heat gun or you can let it naturally dry but I'm far too impatient for that so I keep drying it between the layers. Okay, I'm gonna dry this layer and move on to the next. Okay, so we've got our top layer dry. We're gonna keep going layer by layer and building up the color. Now the idea here is that generally speaking your um, top mountain would be your lightest. This one's a little bit darker probably than I would normally do but that's fine. As you come forward each layer as you come down on your paper but as you're coming forward in perspective each layer would get darker until your final layers are the darkest. Um, those would be the ones that would be the closest to you. And then in this case, the trees would be the closest layer, so they are the absolute darkest. So we're going to go back with some more color. Um, and this is where you may want more test strips to kind of keep 
testing your color and see where you're getting your values at until you have a better idea of uh, what colors you want or I'm just mixing up kind of my next color and actually I'm going to go a little bit lighter somewhere in here and we're just going to put in this one here and it's really simple just guide your brush along Tell about there. And then I'm going to just kind of pull this back and kind of slide it along here. Another thing that I want to do is that this is all soft edges in here, which is which is good. So um, what we don't want though is any hard edges forming here because we want this to all be soft because this is where the next ridge line is going to come in. So if you think this might be a little too much blue, you can take some more clean water really quickly while it's still wet and kind of rub out almost some of that blue. So it's a little bit whiter or if you think the opposite, if you think it's not blue enough, you can pick up some color and start, you know, dotting in a bit more color as you're working. Um, and you can do this while it's wet because the color will spread and you'll still get that nice blended look. If you try this once it starts to dry, you'll notice a big difference. It'll leave a lot of hard edges. I'm just going to clean off this hard edge that was forming. Something like that. With this, you don't have to pull the paint all the way down. You can kind of go layer by layer. It's just important to make sure you've pulled it down far enough that you're into your next layer um, so that you're leaving a, like a lighter background here or like what's here. Okay, so we're gonna dry that and move to the next one. Okay, so we just got that part dry. And we'll move on to the next bit. It is really important to let each layer dry because if you don't, if you just continue painting or it's only partially dried, then what's going to happen when you create your next ridge line? It's just going to bleed into the mountain above it. It's not going to create a nice kind of crisp-ish line, which is what we ideally would want. Um, so we're going to pull this ridge across. And sometimes I'll find if I don't like a particular mountain that's above it, I may just change it to kind of fix any mistakes I made. Okay. So keeping that bottom line wet, we're going to just pick up a bit of a just really light water, light bluish water, and pull your brush across. Simple as that, it helps just blend it out. You can do it a couple of times. I probably do it a few times, and then I will pick up more clean water and really blend it out. I'll do it a few times. Sometimes if it's too dark, I'll blend it all the way up even. I try really hard not to overpaint these particular scenes, but sometimes I don't always like how it comes out, so. Okay, once you kind of get it, how you're reasonably happy with it. Um, take some clean water, just make sure you blend out that bottom all the way down, down to at least your next ridge. And you can go back, pick up a bit more color, and you can dot in a bit more color if you've taken out too much or you just wanna change the look a bit. A 
now the paint will dry um, a little bit lighter than it looks when it's wet. So keep that in mind as well when you're working with values. We'll call that one done. So we'll dry that, move on to our next one. So one thing I noticed as I was drawing this is that in this particular painting, I took my ridge all the way over here. Now in this one, you'll notice it kind of comes across and then it stops and the next ridge kind of comes up that way. Now if I were to start painting in my next ridge over this, it's not going to look quite right because you've got a hard line here. Um, and that will show through on your next layer. So, and that's fine, you can change up the painting as you like. Um, and in this case, we're just going to skip on right past that. And um, I'll actually show you another way we can kind of fix that. So if you really want, you just like how that looks, you can go back over this with your darker color and then kind of go back out and create your ridge over here. So maybe if we'll do that just for the heck of it. Um, more oppression, more pains. Okay, so we're going to take our color and we're going to go back over this ridge line exactly where it is and then when you're ready for it to just kind of go you can just move your brush create your next little little ridge okay and voila just a little extra color I'm rinsing my brush mostly. I'm just gonna pull it across, dragging it. And do that a couple more times. Grabbing some clean water, we'll do that again further down. And if you want to, you can just pull your water all the way down if you want. It's not necessary, but you can. I do that sometimes just to keep it the same. Okay, so that's where you are with that. Um, now we're going to dry this layer and move on to the next one and we just kind of keep building up the color as we continue. All right, so we've got this layer dry. Now we're gonna go into um, probably our second darkest ridge. So we need it to be just a bit darker than this one. So we're gonna pick up, in this case, I'm gonna pick up probably a little bit more of the Payne's blue-gray. Because with watercolor, um, the way to darken it is to add more paint, the way to lighten it is to add more water. So I just want a lot of paint on this particular one. Until I'm kind of happy with where it's at. Okay, now let's go in here. Now to create some of these little um, little bumps and drags when you pull your um, sorry rather bumps and little mountains and hills when you're pulling your brush across just kind of um, drag your brush up and down a little bit and that will kind of give you the you know effect of just it's an easier way to create these little hills and valleys and dips I'm going to pick 
pick up some more paint. I really do want this top line to be the darkest. So I'm just gonna kind of saturate that top line with paint. And then it's the same as all the rest. Picking up some water, reasonably clean, and pulling it across. And again. I do dab off some of the water as I'm working. If your brush is too dry, it's not really great either. So we just got a couple more layers here, so let's dry that and we will keep moving on. Okay, so we're dry here. We're gonna do this a couple more times. We're almost done with this part. We'll do the same thing we did before, picking up some extra colors. Now all your colors are starting to look kind of all the same, so. Picking up more color, you could um, squeeze, I mean if you're working from tubes you'd probably squeeze out some and some up here, but I'm just pulling from the, um, the pans that I have. This is kind of my everyday palette that I use for painting. Okay, so let's do our last, second to last little ridge. Oh, I didn't mean to do that exactly. I kind of wanted to pull up some of that color. And then with some clean water, kind of pull that all back down again. I want it dark, but not too, too dark. I can still pull a little bit more, grab a little bit more paint, darken it in areas if I want. Okay, so we're gonna dry that. We're gonna move on. We're gonna create um, a little tree line here. We're gonna throw in some birds, maybe up over, I'm thinking up here, and we'll put in a few trees over here. You know what, I may change this up. No, we'll, we'll stick with this. We'll put in some trees here. When I paint, sometimes I'll look at uh, the composition. If it's not exactly what I like, then sometimes I will paint over top of it. I'll just put a tree wherever I'm not particularly happy with and what I think will look nice to the painting overall. So I'm just gonna quickly dry this layer and we will move on to the next bit and uh, into some of the detail work. Okay, so we're back to do this bottom ridge. Um, now I'm switching up my brushes. The whole time I've been painting with my number 12 round. And now um, I'm gonna just switch to my eight just so that I can kind of quickly do some upstrokes to um, give the illusion of sort of a tree line. This doesn't have to be very um, 
detailed or complicated really it's simply like what you were doing with the mountains but you're just gonna do some upstrokes to create the idea the illusion of some trees there and these are small trees because this is still quite reasonably far away from us just mixing a bit more color because this will be my darkest layer aside from the black trees okay so you can start off with just kind of creating a little bit of a ridge keeping that bottom edge consistently wet and then just take your your brush and just start creating a few little um, little lines almost or you can start at the top and pull them down I, th I think I usually go top down if I remember and you can do big ones and small ones they're just sort of the idea of trees they don't have to be everywhere you can take a little break and then start up a little uh, stand of them over here And uh, sort of just paint along this ridge, finish it out over here somewhere. Now over here is where we're going to put our trees, so really you don't have to go into a lot of detail here. You're probably not even going to see that at the end. It's going to be covered by the bulk of the tree silhouette. But I do like to finish painting all the way over here. The reason I haven't stopped at any point to paint over on this edge is because you don't exactly know where your tree placement is going to be, so you want to make sure that your background still looks consistent with the rest of the painting. I think we're good with that. Now while that is drying, hopefully, I'm going to grab, there's one more brush I didn't mention that you may or may not want to use, but um, this is just a little two um, round brush again. I'm just going to use it to quickly make um, a few birds up in here. So let's use the same oh, let's use Payne's gray blue kind of combination we've got here. We want slightly darker. And uh, one of my tricks is I'll practice painting bird silhouettes, such as these, um, on a scrap piece of paper. And then I'll practice that a bunch of times until I feel a little bit more confident. And then I use that scrap piece of paper. It's kind of like a, a cheat sheet almost to help me remember some of the bird shapes or um, just to keep practicing until I feel a bit better about how to paint them. I still don't feel better, frankly. I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm painting them, but... I try. So you can make them as big or as little as you want. The bigger they are, the more detailed they would be, the smaller they are, you can just kind of get away with little lines. So I leave that up to you. I would say start small, because you can always go bigger. They always seem to grow on me when I do them. And just a few quick little lines is really all it takes. Some wings, a head, maybe some tail feathers.
They really do grow on me as I'm creating them. And this is where it gets up to you. It's like, how many do you want? Do you want a whole flock of them? Do you want one? Do you want two? Totally where you can get creative and kind of just go with whatever you think looks good. One more over here. Keeping in mind as you're painting them, you know, where the placement of your trees is going to be. Now you'll see in this one, I definitely went a bit bigger. I only did five. Here, I elected to go a little bit smaller. Um, and do some more of them. It's entirely your call, but I think I am going to call that finish. I'm not going to, I'll kind of leave that now. And there you just painted some birds just with a, cute, a few quick lines, you know, just some little um, half circles and adding some bodies to it. Or, I mean, everyone's, I think, drawn seagulls at some point in kindergarten, which is just kind of that little, it's like a shallow M almost. Um, you can do something like that, or just practice them. That's what I what I like to do is practice a shape until I'm a little bit more confident. And saying that, let's move on to trees, which is really a similar thing. Practice. Um, I will switch over to this brush. As I said, this is kind of my tree brush. It's one that I like to use to create my trees. And I'm going to switch palettes here. So I've been using primarily the blue gray we've created. I am going to switch to black. And I like to keep my black, just a personal preference, on its own little dish, little palette. Um, I use black quite a lot, creating my mountains um, and my silhouettes for different things. So I always have some black on the go. And I'm just adding some water to kind of reconstitute this, because as I said, I kind of just keep a chunk of black on here and use it as I like over few weeks sometimes. Sometimes I get it all gone in a couple of days. Depends how much I'm painting. Okay, so let's move on to trees. Making sure this is reasonably dry, which I think for our purposes is it's, it's a little damp over here, but that's fine. We're not painting over there, so we'll call that good. And we'll move on to our trees. Now, there are a lot of ways to paint trees. Um, and if you take a look at my Instagram, if you happen to follow me on there, you can take a look and see some of the different shapes I've done. Um, the one we're doing here is sort of a, I guess, a pine tree that's sort of different needles poking out. This one's a bit more detailed. You could just do simple lines. I've done some Douglas firs and spruce, and I pull inspiration from where I live because there's a ton of trees here. Um, so I look at trees a lot, and I practiced a lot. Uh, scrap pieces of paper, pulling up photos off of the internet, off of Pinterest, um, just literally Google pine tree silhouette and start staring at them, looking at the tree shapes. And the thing to keep in mind is that they're never going to be perfect. They'll have gaps and um, they'll be crooked and have ugly branches. And some will be really pretty and full like Christmas trees and others will be super scraggly. So give your trees a little character. Just kind of have fun with it. That sounds corny, but I love painting trees and I like to, um, I like to create a lot of different kinds of trees, do different forests and I really enjoy it. So the first thing I want to start with is a line. I always start with a straight line. Um, I should say when I'm painting black, if I'm doing a different color, I work a little bit differently. Um, if I'm doing something lighter where I don't want that line to show through, I work differently. But because it's black, it's all gonna be the same color. I'm gonna start with a line. You wanna grab a pencil, sorry, and pop in a little guideline of where you want your tree to be placed. That's totally fine. I do that all the time and then I change it. 
so let's do this similar thing. I'm gonna pop this peak up a little higher and we'll do another one over here, maybe a little further away. These are gonna be a little bit bigger than what's here, but that's fine. Okay, so that's kind of our guideline. Grab a little bit of water and you are working with more black, sorry, more paint than you are water. This is quite strong black. It's not watered down at all. Like very little water was used to create this sort of black swamp I've got on the plate here. Sometimes I'll dab a little bit off to make sure I've got a good point on it. And then um, starting, I like to start kind of a little ways down um, just in case my first stroke down isn't quite as thin as I want. I can always go back and create a little thinner top on it. Um, so I start a little ways down and just grabbing the paper and just pulling my hand straight down. And I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Half of that you're not even going to see really. widen the trunk when you get to the bottom whatever it's just a guideline do the same thing over here starting part part of the way down change my hand angle there we go and the harder you press the thicker the line is so then you kind of naturally go from a thinner to a, a thicker trunk as you pull it down Okay. Now I'm not going to do exactly the same as what's here. This is just to kind of give you an idea. If you wanted to paint along with this tutorial, you can use this picture as kind of a reference. But I'm going to paint for this whatever I feel like. So that's a thin little top. Now if I have too much paint on my brush, this is why I use a synthetic, I'll take some of it off because I do want not a lot of paint on, just kind of a certain magic amount of paint you want on it to get really good details. And you don't want too, too much. Now if you start to get a little bit too symmetrical, stop yourself and kind of just maybe do one side at a time. Keeping in mind trees are gonna have little branches that stick out and aren't fully formed. Um, It's usually, your tree's usually going to be skinniest, well, generally speaking, skinniest at the top, and as you come down, it's going to get bigger um, at the bottom. But that may not be entirely true, it depends on the kind of tree you're drawing. Or painting. And these don't have to be overly detailed. I do get a little carried away sometimes. And you can always go back and thicken things or change it or add more. I would say when it comes to painting trees that probably less is more. Um, start off with less and you can go back and add more later on. Okay, so you're starting to get the idea of, of the tree. The, what I like to do once I get to a certain point 
is move over to the other tree, being careful not to rub paint everywhere with your hand. I think we've all, all done that. All right, so let's say this one's a skinnier top. This is just a much, much skinnier tree. It's not gonna have as many needles at the top. It's probably a younger tree, right? It's smaller, means it's greener. Um, the branches are not as brittle. They're a little bit more flexible. And again, you start getting too symmetrical, just sort of stop and do something else. Okay, let me go back to the other tree. And you get to a point with the silhouette where um, you kind of have to start changing the way that you paint because instead of worrying about all the black, um, now you have to worry about the, the white, the negative space. So you want to leave behind hints of light, but as your tree comes down to the bottom, it's going to get darker. Um, you're going to have more branches, they're going to be thicker and larger and will overlap more so you're going to have less light kind of showing through as you get to the bottom. So keep that in mind as you're painting. There are a ton of trees that just stop, you know, halfway point. That's it. And you can paint that if you like. I do that all the time. Um, but just for this tutorial, we're just going to bring it all the way to the bottom. I think they're a little bit easier because you get to a certain point, you can just start painting black. So just as you're um, slowly getting to the bottom, keep that in mind and keep thinking about where your branches are going to be intersecting your other little tree or however many trees you end up painting. So what I like to do when I get to the kind of a certain point where I know that there's not a lot of um, light that's going to start coming through, I like to pick my points of where there's going to be a lot of light. So I just get these little gaps kind of going. And then by the time you get to the bottom, there's pretty much none left. Now, you do want to kind of keep painting it, um, especially on this tree, because it's smaller, there's going to be less branches. So you want to kind of keep painting it, and especially on this side.
Okay. So let's finish up what this tree is gonna look like on this side. Come down a bit, maybe you've got a few more down here. A couple more. Okay, we've got that side kind of done. Now you can do like kind of what we're doing over here. Do leave some spaces. Okay, so we didn't leave a lot of light in here, but that's fine. We left a bit up in here. And we left a little tiny bit in here. It doesn't need to be a lot. It's just enough so it looks more natural, I guess. And you can come back in here and tidy up whatever you um, didn't like, maybe. I always take a second look at my trees and decide I don't like something and fix it. Or All right. So essentially... That's it. Now what we want to do is let this dry. We don't want this to bleed into our paper as we remove the tape. So we're going to dry this, remove the tape, and then I think we'll call it done. Okay, so we're pretty well dry here. The only thing left to do is remove the tape. So let's just peel that up and we can see how we did. This is without a doubt one of my favorite parts is seeing the nice crisp clean edge on the on the painting. Look at that, all cleaned up and all done. And just like that, in basically under an hour, you kind of have almost the same, <laughs> pretty close, um, a nice sort of misty mountainscape. And um, yeah, I think that's it. That's it for our first tutorial video. Um, thank you for watching. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these, so if you want to subscribe, that's great. If you have any um, comments or requests, please feel free to um, put those yeah in the comment section. I would love to hear from you and hear about what you liked and didn't like about this video. As I said, all the materials I'll make sure to list in the description. And uh, that's it. Until next time, happy painting!